Womb massage has been such a powerful part of my own personal womb healing journey, and it's been a practice that has been so helpful for my clients as well. So many people have come to me to address fertility challenges and disconnection from the womb space and just wanting to balance and support their menstrual cycles as well. And womb massage can be such a powerful practice for that. So today I'm going to show you how to do a womb massage for yourself. And before we jump into that, I want to prepare you by letting you know some things that you need to know about doing this womb massage. For one, if you have an IUD, you do not want to do the womb massage portion of this because the massage that I'm going to be showing you is incorporating abdominal massage and womb massage. So we're going to be working from the diaphragm to the top of the pubic bone. And the womb massage portion is basically from the belly button to the top of the pubic bone. And if you have an IUD, you do not want to do the womb massage practice on the womb aspect of it. Now you can do the abdominal portion of the massage and that is perfectly safe and fine, but again, you want to avoid that if you you want to avoid the womb portion if you have an IUD. Now, before you do any kind of abdominal or womb massage, you of course want to make sure that you're not just coming out of a surgery or anything like that. If you have done a surgery recently, you definitely want to talk to your doctor about doing this kind of massage. I am not a doctor, I am a womb health practitioner, I am an herbalist, and I'm someone who learned this practice from my teachers, Shelly Torgo and Dona Maria. So I learned this in Denver, Colorado, and I also spent a lot of time in the Yucatan studying with a mind midwife, Dona Maria, who taught us this tradition that was passed down for many, many generations in her lineage. What you'll need for this massage is just a massage oil. You may also want to have a towel nearby, something that is not super precious. Um, so maybe if you have a towel that has like some bleach stains on it or something like that, something where you don't, where you'll feel comfortable like getting some oil on it. And you'll want to put a towel underneath you just in case any oil drips. And otherwise, that's all you need to get started with this womb massage. So times when you don't want to do the womb massage are if you are having heavy periods. You don't want to do the womb massage right before you start your period. You can do it after. You can do it in other phases of your cycle. But the latter part of the luteal phase of your cycle is a time when you would not want to do the womb massage because this can facilitate movement. It helps to release stagnation. And that's really helpful and really important because a lot of times the physical aspects of what people could be experiencing in the womb space when it comes to fibroids and cysts and endometriosis and those kinds of things, those are conditions of stagnation and womb massage helps to release stagnation. So if you're someone who has heavy bleeding, then you want to avoid doing this massage in, I would say, about five days before your period starts. Now, if you are um, pregnant, then you definitely don't want to be doing this massage. If you're trying to get pregnant, then you don't want to do this massage after ovulation. If you are trying to get pregnant, this is a really powerful tool and practice that you can work with to help you get pregnant. But once ovulation happens, then you want to lay off of the massage until you find out if you have um, conceived or not. Now, those are some of the precautions about doing this massage. Now, some of the benefits of this massage, again, it helps to release that stagnation in the womb space. It can also help to connect us to the womb space and connect us to our creative center, our sacral energy. This is our creative power. If you think about the womb space, this is where we can grow a baby. This is where we are connected to our sexuality and our sexuality is also very much about our uh, creativity and the lives that we're creating for ourselves. And all of that is really important if you're experiencing any kind of blockages in how you're showing up in life, 
in your creativity, in your sexuality, if you've experienced any kind of sexual trauma, wound massage is really helpful because you're getting to activate this center without having to touch parts of yourself that may still be uh, triggered by touch, by physical touch. And this can help to work you up to the point where you can work with something like a um, obsidian yoni wand or something like this. So this practice is something that I would recommend or I recommend to my clients to do I would say like three nights a week if you really want to be consistent with it. Wound massage can help to bring the uterus back to a center. So sometimes the womb is, or the uterus I should say, is tilted to the left or to the right. And wound massage can help you recenter your uterus. So let's go ahead and jump into the practice and I'll explain to you how to do this wound massage for yourself. We will start the massage by just connecting to the womb space. So go ahead and get some of your massage oil and put some of that into your hands. I use about a quarter sized amount, but you can use whatever amount you need. This oil is ginger and calendula infused for improved circulation and softening. And to open up the massage, you are going to massage going down the left and up the right. And this is the direction that supports digestion the most. So you'll just go around the belly button a few times to connect with your womb space and your belly. Just start warming up for the massage that we'll be doing. And you can use gentle to firm pressure here as you are just opening things up and getting warmed. So the next thing we're going to do is check the tipte. And to do that, you will be putting your hands, your fingers into the center of your belly button and you'll be checking to see if there is a pulse that's jumping back up at you. So press down in the center and wait until you feel a pulse. And you may notice that it's maybe off center, so maybe try moving up a little bit from the center of your belly button, down a little bit or to either side and press firmly until you start to feel a pulse. Now, if you don't feel any pulse jumping back at you, that is okay. Or if your pulse is not in the center, that's okay as well. The more you do this massage, the more circulation you'll have in your abdominal region, and eventually you will start to feel that pulse jumping back at you when you, ch when you check your tip day. Now, if you notice that your pulse is off center, maybe it's up a little bit or to the side, then you'll want to massage it back to the center as best you can and just using a few strokes to help support the body in moving that big um, pulse and that energetic center back to your belly button. So here you'll see me moving from the diaphragm down to my belly button in order to help pull the pulse that's a little bit above my belly button back down to the center. And then you'll go ahead and grab some more massage oil so that we can move into the actual massage, womb massage and abdominal massage portion of this. So you'll be starting from one side, it could be either the left or the right, underneath the rib cage, and you're gonna go from the ribs down to the center, your belly button in a diagonal motion. You'll be pressing firmly here not so much that you feel pain, but it is normal to feel a little bit of discomfort as you are starting to get used to this massage and kind of 
loosening up any tension in your abdomen. You'll do three strokes in each direction. So three strokes from the left rib cage down to the belly button, three strokes from the diaphragm down to the belly button, and then three strokes from the other rib cage down to your belly button. And you can do this about three times. So basically that would mean that each section would get nine strokes in total. And so you'll see me here just repeating that sequence again, going from the side down to the center, the middle down to the center, and then the other side down to the center. And the point of this is to bring your energy back to your energetic center and also just to massage the internal organs of your body. And then you'll see me kind of pulling from the sides into the center of the body. And this is again to just massage the internal organs and also support digestion. Then we'll move on to the womb massage portion of this. And you can start by just feeling around, get a sense of where your hip bones are and as you press down right on the insides of your hip bones, you'll feel some little dips. And if you press down into those dips, you may notice that there is a bit of fullness in the center. And that fullness that you feel in the center is going to be your bladder and your uterus. And sometimes that can be a little bit to the left or to the right. And as you do this massage, you'll notice that you can start to pull that back into the center through just practice of massage on a regular basis. So next we'll start pulling in from the inside of the hip bone up to the belly button. And we will be reflecting what we did with the abdominal massage in the womb portion of the massage. Pulling from the inside of the hip bone up to the center, your belly button, in a diagonal motion, pressing down pretty firmly. And again, you don't want to feel any pain, but it is normal to feel some discomfort. And you'll do basically a repeat of what we did for the abdominal portion by doing three strokes from the inside of one hip bone three strokes from the top of the pubic bone to the belly button. And then again, you'll do three strokes from the opposite hip bone up to the belly button in a diagonal motion. Then you can repeat this a couple more times, just like you did with the abdominal portion. So three sets of this motion will give you nine strokes for each section. And now we can go ahead and start with closing the massage going around the belly button again, supporting digestion, supporting circulation, and helping the body to remove stagnation. Here, I'm just repeating the womb portion of the massage one more time to further support the uterus and its positioning. So 
now we'll move on to closing the hips. And this is a practice that you will do at the end of your massage. You'll just need a scarf or a rebozo to wrap around your hips. And you wanna make sure that you have the scarf really low on your hips. You don't want it to be wrapped around your waist. And you'll just do one loop, pull it snugly, and that's it. And this is really helpful for just supporting the hips and the womb space after the work that we've done with the womb massage. And leave it on for just about five to 10 minutes to give yourself that support. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that practice. Uh, womb massage can be so powerful and I would suggest taking some time for yourself after you do a womb massage, especially if it's your first time doing a womb massage. Take some time to maybe take a shower or have a bath or do something else that's really nurturing. And after you take a bath or take a shower, you wanna make sure that you're keeping warm. You wanna make sure you keep your feet warm, put some socks on, put pants on if it's cold. That way you are keeping your womb space nice and warm because the energy from your feet travels up to your womb space. So if your feet are cold, your womb is cold. So make sure that you are keeping that in mind after you do this womb massage. And also you can, again, do this massage as often as you'd like. I already shared with you some of the precautions of when you don't wanna do this massage and make sure you stick to those and have awareness around those. And then I also suggest working with a practitioner of womb massage. Go and get a womb massage with someone. Um, this is a really great way of knowing the proper pressure. It's kind of hard to explain that in a video. Um, you kind of have to feel it for yourself. So if you ever do have an opportunity, definitely go and see a womb massage practitioner. That way you can get an idea of what is the appropriate depth for this massage in order for you to see healing and transformation and change. Now, I shared so much with you today. I hope you enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you again soon. If you liked what I had to share with you today, please do subscribe. I have lots more amazing stuff coming up for you and I have a lot of resources for anyone who is on a womb healing journey. Definitely check out all my other videos, check out my blog. Okay, I'll see you again soon.